Hey, welcome back. It's me, Mr. Trewin. Today we're looking at a new uh, new lesson in the book, new chapter of our book, and we're going to start off with something called the perpendicular bisector theorem. And uh, the rule is this, or the theorem goes, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So that is our theorem, and that theorem also has a converse that we're going to look at. If we say it backwards, it's going to be a true statement as well, and we call that the converse. If a point is equidistant, if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then that point is on the perpendicular bisector. So we're going to start off with a uh, just I'll put a line segment here for number one, and we're going to start with this, and I'm just going to show you what a perpendicular bisector is. So we have two words that we need to look at: perpendicular, which we've looked at before and we've talked about in previous chapters. When we talk about things being perpendicular, we're talking about lines that intersect to form right angles. So the first thing about a perpendicular is we're going to need to make a right angle. And then the bisector means that we're going to put that right angle at the midpoint, the point that cuts the segment into two equal portions, bisects it. So I'm going to start with example number one. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you have a perpendicular bisector and some of the symbols you would see. So once again, we'll start at the middle. So I'm just going to do my best. I'm not going to measure this out for this video, but I'm going to go to the middle. I'm going to find a midpoint. So with that being the midpoint, when we go to the middle, we separate these into two congruent parts. And then when we do perpendicular, we're going to draw a segment that goes right through the midpoint of a, sec of a line segment, but it does so in a way that makes a 90 degree. So this is called a perpendicular bisector. You're going to see things like this in our text and in our assignments and stuff. And what we're looking for is sides that are congruent and 90 degrees. So what our rule states or what our theorem states is that every line or every point along that bisector, that perpendicular bisector, will always be equidistant from these two points. So if you imagine I just randomly drew a dot, say right here, that's telling me that this distance will be the exact same distance here. Everywhere along there, as I draw any one of those dots, the distance from here to that point and from here to that point is always going to be the same. And that's just basically how the theorem is supposed to be worded for us. Now you can see that we have a right triangle. So when we do this, we are creating a right triangle with this being the leg, this being the hypotenuse, this being a leg, a leg, and a hypotenuse. And you can see that we're also making two congruent triangles, or we're making one isosceles triangle. So just a couple things I want you to notice as we draw lines and we start working on things where we're drawing these triangles out and plotting these perpendicular bisectors. I want you to know that what we're doing is one, we're making an isosceles triangle or two right triangles. And just, just that, I wanted you to let, make sure you knew that for solving some problems. So let's look at a problem that involves a perpendicular bisector. When I look at example number two, I'm trying to solve this. It says, what is the length of segment AB? So I'm going to try to solve this and figure out what the, seg uh, the distance is from here to here, from A to B. What's that total length? Well, before I can get started, the first thing I got to figure out is how are these numbers related? And so when I look at this, I see that this segment is congruent to this segment, which means that C has got to be right in the middle. It's got to be the midpoint. And then I notice from A to C that we've got a right angle here. So that's telling me that AC is a perpendicular bisector, which means, from what we just looked at, that means that this side, 6x minus 10, is equal to this side, 3x plus 2. And we are going to need that to solve the problem. So we're going to start with, I'm going to write it out, 6x minus 10 equal to 3x plus 2. And being as though um, I've written this out, I can solve this, and that'll give me x. And if I figure out x, I can go back and substitute it to get a, b. 
So starting right here, I see I got six X's and three X's. So I always go with getting rid of the smaller amount of X's from both sides. So now I have three X minus 10 equals two, adding 10, three X equals 12. Which means that X's, if I divide by three, X's will equal four. And again, that's great. And algebra teachers everywhere will be excited, but we are looking for the length of AB. So what we need to do is take that value, X equals four, and we need to substitute it in for the segment marked AB. So when I come up here and I look at that, I've got six times four, that's 24, minus 10. Six times four is 24, minus 10 gives me 14. Now, although I did not write it, what would we also know about this? Is that segment AD would also be 14. Because if you plug that in, three times four, 12 plus two, 14. And that kind of goes right along with what we were looking at when we looked at this theorem to begin with. All right, the next theorem that we're gonna look at is called an angle bisector theorem. In this case, what we're gonna do, instead of bisecting a segment, we're going to bisect an angle, which means we're going to take an angle and we're going to run a segment right down the middle of it so that it divides it into two equal or congruent angles. So the rule is, or the theorem says, if a point is on the angle bisector, then it's equidistant from the sides of the angle. These are the sides that are forming that angle. So again, I'm going to, just for our purposes, I'm going to draw to the best of my ability, I'm going to eyeball it, but I'm going to draw an angle, a line that looks to be in the middle to the best of my ability. And then if it's an angle bisector, it's going to divide this into two congruent angles. Now, what's going to, what we need to know about that is that these, this segment is always going to be equidistant from either side. So when we measure that, like if I want to measure the distance from this, this segment to this line, we always measure distance at a 90 degree angle. So when I bring this over, I make like a right triangle out of this. That's how we measure distance. So what I'll do is whenever I put any dot along this line and I measure it to the segment at 90 degrees, these are always going to be congruent. I'm always going to get the same number here as I do here. All right, so let's put that to use and solve one more problem and that will pretty much wrap this video up. It's not a very long video because this is kind of a, uh, a, a small topic that we're gonna cover today. Not a lot to it at this point. We'll be adding to it though. All right, so in this one, number four, it says AC bisects BAD. All right, well, that means that AC, this segment, bisects the angle BAD. So right away, I now know that these are congruent. But I also know that when you bisect an angle, now that means that these just became congruent as well. And I now look at the problem and it says, BC is equal to two X plus three. So if I wanna write that information in, I can say two X plus three. And DC is equal to 4x minus 11. And again, once I realize that these are a perfect or an angle bisector, I know that these two things are congruent, these two angles are, and so are these two segments, which puts me right in the spot where I need to be for solving the problem. Because I see these are equal, I can just go like this, 2x plus 3 equals 4x minus 11 minus 2x minus 2x. Okay, now if I add 11 over to both sides, I get 14 equals 2x. X is going to be the number 7. Again, that's great. Everyone's excited. We got that algebra out of the way, but it says what's the length of BC? So once again, I got to go back and substitute my value in. I know x's are 7. So 2 times 7. 14 and 14 plus 3 gives me an answer of BC is equal to 17.
That's what I was looking for. And then what would I know about the other one if I did my math right? Four times seven is 28, and 28 take away 11 also gives me 17 here. So I know that I've done this correctly. So anyways, I hope this uh, helps you to get this done and hope you understand the lesson. And uh, we'll be back for another day tomorrow and another lesson very, very shortly. Bye.